this baby you're going to Earth. Yeah, have you been well? Have you been doing much? I'm pretty good, yeah. I actually last night filled out our census. Our country, it's census night tonight, but I got in early last night and did our census form. I remember when I was young, I was so excited by the census form. Like, I thought it was just the most amazing thing. And now I imagine it probably feels like a bit of a chore. Or was it fun? No, it was a chore. It's right. <laughs> it's helped by being online. But once you've filled out a lot of details about yourself, you suddenly realise you now have to replicate all that information for everyone else in the household. And the novelty has worn off. So, yes. <laughs> but... but I had a junior one sitting with me going through it, and it was kind of interesting explaining why we do it, or trying to think up reasons why we do it. And <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'd, li- I'd like to hear your explanations as to why you do it. <laughs> say, well, the the US Constitution says from time to time we will take a sample, <laughs> <laughs> and we just sort of do what America does. Yeah, you didn't do like the crazy thing that everyone loves doing and say that your religion was Jedi. No, no, I, I, no. I, I didn't think of it at the time. I guess it's hard when you're a Christian minister. <laughs> That's right. You can't lie. I'm not actually a Jedi. But I, <laughs> but I um, was, yeah, put down my church's denomination, but I did think of that. And yeah, there was a bit of eye rolling today at a coffee conversation as people were talking about that. But I think that idea is a bit old now. A yeah. I wonder if when Luke Skywalker was doing the census before he had his second confrontation with Vader, he was like, well, technically I'm not a Jedi, yeah. but I've done the Yoda stuff and I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's right. It's like I haven't faced Vader again, but yeah, yeah I'm yeah. supposed to technically. <laughs> There's someone with some bandsaw outside, and I swear they did not start it until we hit the record button. It's like they were watching me. Hang on, I'm just going to look out the window and see where they are. Hang a ban- a bandsaw. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear it. It's, it's miles away. That's ridiculous. <laughs> do you want to do this again in an hour? No, I don't. I'm hoping it won't be too. You know, how strongly are you hearing it? I heard it when you opened the window. No, no, it's all right. It's not showing up heavily on the waveform, so let's just let's persist and see what happens. I don't know that it's actually a bandsaw. It could uh, that, it could be. It probably isn't a bandsaw. But it's uh, I don't know what it is. It could be a hedge trimmer or it's some cutting device. Could you see it from the window, or are you just? No, I can't. I can't see it. It's just reverberating. The, hang on, that's a podcast idea. Roaming Brady. Like where you just go roaming the neighbourhood trying to track down the sand, the sound of this bandsaw or this trying to track down what this sound is and just roaming describing where you are and and slowly the bandsaw noise gets louder and louder and louder. (laughs) I don't think that's that good. What about just me grumbling about neighbourhood noises like, oh, next door neighbour's dog, oh, the lawnmower. It's just like that person's looking at me again. Why are they <laughs> yeah. grumbling yeah. Brady? That, that, is a, that, that is a funny idea, actually. Well, I mean, that's just me, basically. That's just being married to me, basically. So Pretty soon, yeah, the grumbling bit would drop off and just fans would know it as Brady. So with the census, was there any part... What was the best fun part to fill out? Was there any part where you felt you got to, like, you know, express your personality in any way? No, it's very... I mean, it's, of course, it's technical. It, you, have to, you have to tell the truth that it's yeah. very technical. There's a, what, there are a few bits where you have to do calculations when you're, you know, where were you living one year ago? Where were you living five years ago? And so, you know, just yeah. looking up that, well, just trying to remember, hang on, was it five or six or what was it? You then have to do your income. Yeah. So you're thinking, oh, what's included? Is that net or gross or is that, you know, yeah. including the government benefits for child support or is it not or you know so you do i put in that cheeky unmade podcast uh, patreon money <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah strictly speaking not UK. that we get any patreon money the amount of money we spend on postage at the moment sending stuff out to patrons making cool stuff and posting it around the world it's just <laughs> postage has gone bananas oh my postage bill is crazy the people i'm a celebrity at the post office they they treat me like royalty when i come in with my huge <laughs> boxes of stuff they've never asked me what it is do you have like a vip 
like lane like instead of having to line yeah, up I do like I have that. I have like a, this thing called drop and go I have like this card that I put money on online and I just walk in and just dump all the stuff normally if you're drop and go you have to fill out a form and your card number and what you're sending but I don't have to do that now I just walk in with this huge box of stuff and just put it on the counter and they go hey and walk away and I don't even have to say who I am or anything they're just like <laughs> And if there's someone new there, they're like, oh, you have to fill in this form. And then the lady who manages the post office goes, don't worry about him. <laughs> like, gives me a wink. She knows. <laughs> She's obviously opened a package, seen the unmade podcast spoon of the week cards and gone, yep, I understand now. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You'd have a lot it. of fans. <laughs> These are great. <laughs> Well, you've probably bribed her with a few of them. Like, here you go. <laughs> a pack under the counter. I pay, I pay, I pay in sofa shop pins. <laughs> yeah. So in all seriousness, why did you tell your girls you have to do the census? What did you say was the overriding reason? I said that we need, the, the government needs to know, you know, who everyone is and how many of us there are and what we're doing. And they, in order to be mm. able to plan, right, how many roads do we mm. need and, and how much do we need to spend on, um, you know, the hospitals and healthcare because of people's ages. And they ask the pretty fair question, which is, don't they know that already? Like, mm. don't, aren't they tracking how many people are born, dying, coming into the country? And, you know, like, yeah. it's not like my age has changed. Like, I'm one year on, five years on from last time, you know, 45 yeah. years on from when I was born. But I guess it's a bit of a, it's like a stock take in a way, isn't it? Of, all right, where is everyone and what you, what are you doing? And yep. they, they can get all that information quickly rather than going to state departments who, you know, know where you live and what you own and all that kind of stuff. Well, hang on, before I go on to what would make the census more fun, is there another overriding reason why we do a census? Like, apart from knowing how many of us there are and confirming and... I guess a real major reason is to do with elections and to make sure the numbers of people in different constituencies and things like that and there's the right representation in the parliament. But that all comes under the broad heading of planning and stuff. So I think I think your answer was a pretty good one. It's interesting. Every time I do it, I forget how personal it is. Like, like you go into it thinking, is it going to be, oh, there are two adults and two children in this house tonight, you know? But then you realise, oh, actually, they want my name. Oh, hello. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then <laughs> is, this, is this okay? I get, well, I guess the census, you idiot. Of course it's okay. And then they go into incomes like what's your income but but then details like you know you know the address and you're thinking am i geez am i supposed to be putting all this in but you sort of give yourself <laughs> over to it and think well you know, who am i hiding this from like yeah. this is the government they already know i exist like <laughs> it would be more interesting if they asked our opinions about things like we could get surveys done and polls at the same time like what do you think about the weather you know like <laughs> Or like, if you what ten? What are your ten favorite albums? <laughs> yeah, that that's right. imagine how long you'd spend on the census then. <laughs> that would be <laughs> Tim would spend weeks. He'd be knocking on the front door of Parliament House, going, "Oh, I've changed my mind about number seven. Can I change it, please?" <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best film you've seen in the last twelve months? What logical flaws do you think there are in the film Sliding Doors? You know, like you just. <laughs> I tell you what, though, these documents are like kind of a big deal. In in my wife's side of the family has a bit of a, a mystery to do with parentage of one of the relatives, and it's a bit of an unsolved mystery. And we have actually joined all those websites that you use to like, you know, research family history to try and figure out who someone's parent was. And they actually release old census data after a certain number of years. And we were going back and looking at who was living in the house. And there was some man living in the house that night who had a different surname. And we were like, oh, could that be so-and-so's parent? Was so-and-so oh. having an affair? And so, like, in the future, like, you know, long after you're dead, people will be able to look at this document and go, oh, okay, so those two people were living in that house that night and stuff. So That's interesting. What happens if your girls happen to be doing a sleepover that night at a friend's house? Do they get, like, recorded for all eternity at someone else's house? Yes, that's how it works, yeah. Mm. They count who's staying under your mm. house. Even though I filled it out last night, it's got to be for tonight, you know. Mm. How many people are under your roof tonight? Mm. A friend was telling me today about when they were on a massive expedition, like, as a student, university student, and they were on the field, like, doing a field trip, and they got caught in mm. a storm and couldn't get out, and they all ended up, like, 25 of them all under one roof, and... 
they so they had to fill out the census form that night, which apparently one of the senior lecturers had brought along. And back in those days, which was several decades ago, it had like mm. a you know more more um, patriarchal kind of language. So it actually said, mm. you know, who who is the head of the household, and then. <laughs> You know, and then who is married to the head of the household? And so they, this senior lecturer say, well, tonight I'm head of the household to his 25 university students. <laughs> and they all had to go on to the same form. Who would you have put as head of the household if that was a question this year? Oh, I, th- I, I, I think it's pr- pr- pretty clear that it's my wife. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the head of our household and he has delegated Jesus. nearly all his authority <laughs> my, to my wife. And... <laughs> I actually just spent the last three nights at a music festival uh, with 30,000 other people staying really... in tents and caravans and that. What would have happened if that was census night? Yeah, you still have to fill it out. You fill it out wherever you are. Yeah. So what if you're in a tent? Well, it's a... It's a... What, if you spend, what if you spend that night passed out in a puddle of mud because you're hammered at a music festival? Yep, that option was there. I... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I clicked that option, but that was there. Apparently, you're supposed to do it, and... The the question that I have, and I don't, I haven't even answered this question yet, because the form, because it's online, we got a letter weeks ago saying, you know, on this night, you need to fill out the census, go to this web address, here's your code, log in password, and away you go, which I did fine. Halfway through doing it, though, one of my daughters said, what about Nan, the famous Mrs. Hine, who's been on the podcast before? She doesn't have the internet. And I'm thinking, Hmm. actually, you're right. I don't know. I, I, and I, I've actually forgotten to contact her. It's t- tonight. What what's she doing? <laughs> Has she? Can you fill in the census form by crochet? <laughs> slowly knitting her answers. Yeah. But I don't know if people yeah. over a certain age get posted a paper one or what happens. Yeah. So she may be missing out tonight. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to call her later on. Or maybe they just know her because she because she calls up so often. They're like, "Oh, you don't need to do it, Mrs. Hyde. We know who you are. Like it's the local. Like my mum to the government is like you at the post office. It's like, oh yeah, no, we know her. Don't worry about it, Mrs. Hyde. You don't need to fill it out." The first time your dad did the census form, it was actually literally just a roll call. <laughs> everyone just called. <laughs> everyone just had their name called out. <laughs> As time went on, it got more advanced. And so at the time of Christ, there was the famous one where Jesus had to go off to his <laughs> family birth, Mary and Joseph. What about, like, I remember one time when I was living with my old housemate in Adelaide and he went out one night and got really, really drunk. And when he got home, he couldn't find the keys to the house or he couldn't open the door and he couldn't wake me up. He actually just went and s- slept in the front yard on the grass. <laughs> Would he count as being in the house that night in the census? Like, what? <laughs> What, what, have, what would that have been? What would the status of that be? I don't know. And, of course, there are, there are vast amounts of homeless people as well. Um, and I wonder yes. if people engage where they are. A lot of them, particularly around Adelaide, have regular places to sleep. So I wonder if the welfare services are involved mm. in checking where people are. They may not. I mean, it depends how regular your housemate was getting drunk. They may not have included him on their list. It's like, <laughs> let's be sure to drive past the front yard. <laughs> no, no, no. They actually, they did. They sent a census form to our front yard. <laughs> I think he got woken up by the newspaper being thrown on him. <laughs> That's a legendary paper boy that drives along at six o'clock in the morning goes, yep, I'm aiming for that guy. I'll tell you a, a thing about paper boys. One of the great disappointments in life, because we get the paper delivered every day, right? Yep. So we always talk about the paper boy. And for years, every Christmas, we would take like a card and like, some money to the news agent to give to the paper boy like you know here's a 10 pounds and a and a christmas card as well yeah and but we never we but we never saw these boys who were delivering the the papers we just knew they had the names it was you know Dan and Bill or something like that yeah and it was only years later cuz you know I'm not up in the I'm not up early very often so I never get to see the paper boy uh, it's only in recent years that I've started seeing the people delivering the newspapers and they're actually like men in their 50s. <laughs> and it was, it's kind of disappointing. And also, I feel a bit silly now saying, you know, dear Danny, thanks for delivering our papers this year. Here's five pounds. And I'm giving it to like some 50 year old man. Like, <laughs> You're leaving out sweets for him and stuff. Paper boys are very rarely boys these days. Our current paper boy pulls up in a car and just walks up to our front door with the newspaper every morning. <laughs> I, you know, I was a paper boy before. I think I've mentioned this on the podcast previously. Um, 
Mm. It was in the afternoon, thank goodness, three nights a week. And I'd had I'd 100 papers to deliver in, in my area on my BMX. Dad used to help me out, which is pretty amazing, on his bike. Yeah. Although one day it gave him a heart attack and he had to go home early. I had to deliver those papers. Yeah. It's heaps annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I remember when it was hot... And you'd sweat like crazy on a really hot day. Hmm. And, of course, so the ink runs everywhere, you know, on your hands. And I'd come back with black all over my face and arms and hands and all that kind of stuff. It was a, um, it was, it was real work. Oh, hard yakka. I didn't get any tips or sweets or extra money or anything like that. You're a, you're a lovely, no. kind patron. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, thanks. <laughs> Ideas for a podcast. I've got a qu- I've got one at the end, but I've got a quick one now. Yeah. How's this for a podcast, Tim? It's called Where Are the Babies? <laughs> right. This is a podcast tracking down the fate, the destiny, whatever happened to all the babies you see in movies and TV shows. Yeah. Not child actors, because they often become actors. And also, they they already kind of look like people and stuff, so that's less interesting. <laughs> I'm talking absolute babies, you know, yes. like newborns and stuff. Because there are you so often see newborns in films. Mm. Someone has a baby, oh, you get all emotional. Yep. And you see this baby for ten seconds, you know, just looks like all all babies. Let's be honest. I'm sorry, people, but all babies look the same. <laughs> so. You, you, you see a brief shot of a baby. <laughs> Come on, they do though, don't they? I get so frustrated when people see like an absolute newborn baby and go, oh, look, oh, he has your nose. Oh, she <laughs> has do- your eyes. <laughs> they don't. All babies are just round and pudgy and they all look the same. And after about six months, yes, they do start looking like their genetic <laughs> forebears. But newborn babies all look the same. So I would like to see... <laughs> A podcast that goes into whatever happened to that baby in that film. The famous one is that baby on the cover of, is it Nevermind, the Nirvana album? Everyone oh, always yeah. loves whatever happened to that, whatever happened. And it's that the fate of that boy is well known. He's like, you know, he's almost famous for being not famous and people tracking him down. But there are lots of other babies in movies and TV shows and things like that. I'd be curious just to see what, what happened to them, whatever came of them. Whether they feel like they peaked too early in life. And it's been yeah. <laughs> the dark and hard side of, of Hollywood life ever since. The The one that comes to my mind straight away is that 80s film, Three Men and a Baby. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do remember it. Yeah, really, really, really. Tom Selleck, Ted Danson, S- Steve Gutenberg. I think it was. Yeah, the other one. And I think the baby was on the um, cover of, like on the film poster as well. I can picture the cover of the video. So, yeah, they, they sort of immortalised, you know what I mean? Like, it's, oh, here we go. There's you when you were young being held by Tom Selleck and Ted Danson, you know. I'd like to know what happened to the baby that Marlon Brando has at the start of Superman. So when they're still on Krypton and we see the baby Superman being put in that spaceship to be sent off the planet before the planet is destroyed. Is that Marlon Brando? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. He got like some, That's he set some world record for that movie for the most amount of money per minute on screen or something. It's been so long since I saw Superman uh, that I, the original Superman, I don't even, I don't think I even knew who Marlon Brando was when I saw it. I was just a kid. No, I, well, I didn't when I first did as well. Yeah. Does he play it all tough like The Godfather? Like, here's baby, you're going to earth. <laughs> he is quite a great father figure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They use him again in in the um the later Superman movie. He gets used. They use that some of that old footage. And anyway, I digress. The baby is what we're talking about, not Marlon Brando. No, that's right. Although, if we are going to digress, one of the bad guys in that is Gene Hackman. Is that right? He's like, yes, yeah. He's Lex Luthor in. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. He's been in everything, hasn't he, Gene Hackman? Lex yeah. Luthor is famous for being bold. As a character right, in the comic and yeah. subsequent people who play him usually play him as bold. But Gene Hackman refused to shave his head and be bold when he was cast in Superman. So there is a scene where he's bold. He takes off a wig, but that's just him wearing like a bold cap thing. But he, he wouldn't shave his head for the film. Can I say, I, I watch, while we're on Gene Hackman, which I don't know how we got onto Gene Hackman, but he, he has the most <laughs> telling smile. Like 
Gene Hackman has, in all his films, he sort of has this sort of smile, which is kind of, I see what you're saying there, but I know more and you know that I know more and something sinister is going to happen. You know, he's got this sort of, he's got such a way about him, Gene Hackman. I really enjoy him as an actor, which is just as well because he's in every second movie. (laughs) (laughs) I was doing a little bit of, like, during my eight and a half seconds of research... (laughs) <laughs> Eight and a half seconds of research is probably a good name for our podcast. Um, I did check out a little bit about babies in movies, and they very often use twins. Ah, yes, yes, as newborn babies, but not for the reason you think. I bet I know what you think the reason is. Oh, there's probably some. The reason I think is that there's some union law for actors about the amount of hours they can spend on set, or yeah, and being able to interchange, and that's a and that's the smart guess. But the actual reason they very often use twins to play newborns is that twins are normally smaller than most babies when they're born Ah. and if the baby's smaller that makes them look that makes them look more like a baby because apparently the cam the camera adds you know a few pounds even to babies (laughs) and babies look older than they should so they want the smallest possible baby they can get away with so twins are smaller and also, because they're smaller, they last longer. So you've got a longer window of weeks or months in which you can use them. So twins are much sought after for that reason. That makes sense. I know the other question you you want to know the answer to, and that is who gets the money? And in America, normally the baby will end up getting the money because there are laws to do with protecting young people who earn money in movies. But in the UK, it's usually just the parents to decide what happens to the money. The parents... Often will just keep the money for themselves for hiring out their baby as a prop. So that in the, in America, they have to put the money into a particular trust that's held for the child. It yeah, I think there's this there's this law that I think that's named after Jackie Coogan, the child actor, because Jackie Coogan's parents or guardians or something siphoned off all the money that was earned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so because of that, they've, there are there are laws in America to make sure the kids keep the money. Interesting. Hmm. Babies. Where are the babies? What happened next to that baby? Hi, I'm Brady Harron. You probably don't recognise me, but I played, you know, the young Luke Skywalker. Or I was the baby. <laughs> you can imagine some people dining out on that. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to say, as long as you're not trying to build a life on it, right? Like you had this one moment and you forever bringing it up, like you have a calling card for it. Yeah. If you're going on and you're living a different life, it is a pretty cool thing to say when you're at one of those events at work or something. Let's go around the room and introduce ourselves and just say something interesting about us. You know, what's our yeah. favourite colour and something interesting about where we come from and just say, well, <laughs> you know. I was I was baby Superman. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, you're kidding. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got to pull out a picture or people would Google it and go, oh, I can see the resemblance and... Your theory about them all looking the same goes down the gurgle. <laughs> it, it is, there is something especially pathetic about your claim to fame being something that you literally can't remember and you had no say in whatsoever doing. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> That's like, right. That is a pretty tenuous claim to fame. You gotta see the baby. What's that? What's that from? That's, that is from Seinfeld. Jerry, you gotta see the baby. You know, when he's bantering on about the enthusiasm of people to come and see their new baby. Right. I'm sorry. I don't remember that one. Sorry about... I apologise for the Seinfeld reference. That's all right. It's been a while. It's it has been a, been a while. while. I, I, see there's a, I see there's a Seinfeld Lego set out. I was wondering if you were considering getting that. I had not seen that. Yeah. It's like the set It's the set of Seinfeld. It's Jerry's apartment. Oh, that's that's quite cute. I might, I might consider that for one of my daughters who's probably just heard me say that on the podcast now. <laughs> and the present spoiled. As if it's really for one of your daughters. Like, why don't you just get it for yourself? Because that's a bit weird to buy. <laughs> to buy. Who buys Lego sets as an adult? Oh, oh no, sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> Moving yeah, on. I'm, I'm looking at two of them right now. <laughs> I don't make them. I've got this incredible collection of Lego sets and I haven't made any of them yet. I just got the Lunar Lander and the World Map, for those who are wondering. Yeah, they're cool. I like that. Can I just, on the world map one, the world map doesn't look very detailed, though. Is it? Is, does it go more detailed than it appears? Well, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It looked a bit easy. Is it like Lego or Lego Junior? Like, is it? No, it's grown up. All right. Uh, let me see if there's an age on it. Hang on. 18 plus. Oh. Yeah. It just looked, I remember looking at it going, oh, that's a bit, 
it's a bit young for Brady, but maybe he's just. Hang on, let me count. Let me count how many Lego studs across Australia is. Hang on. I'm just grabbing it. So Australia is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 studs across. Hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it's not super detailed, but it's pretty like, you know, it's hard to, you have to, you're going to have to pay a lot of attention to get it right. I'm not going to have to do anything. You're, you're going to do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's talk about one of our sponsors today, Tim. Yes. Let's talk about Hover. Hover is the place to go for registering domain names. They've got this brilliant, brilliant website. It's a great service. It's easy to use. I register all my domain names these days with Hover. Tim, you're a Hover fan, aren't you? I am a Hover fan, but I wonder if it, it, it's not just the place to register domain names. What if it was also the place to register baby names? Like, <laughs> Hover branched out. And- <laughs> Well, I mean, before Tim goes too far off piste here, as if what is supposed to be a sponsorship message for a service that actually exists, let me... What you could do, a good use of Hover would be registering your baby's name on Hover when it's born as a domain name. So, like, if I had a child named, you know... Travis. Travis. Yes. Travis Harron. I would, the day Travis was born, go to Hover and register travisharron.com. Because not only then could Travis have that later in life, I could use that in the early years maybe as a, as a website or a place to post baby pictures for the family and stuff like that. But also, that'd be a nice gift as well if you know someone who's just had a baby, register the baby name as a domain and then give it to your friend as a gift. Here's a little surprise. It's so hard buying presents for people who have babies these days. How about that? That's a good idea. I wish Sting, Sting I bet Sting wishes his parents had done that. It's like when he was born. Let's get yeah. Sting.com. There we go. <laughs> Sting. What's Sting's real name? It's, it's Gordon Sumner, isn't it? That's exactly right. Well done. Gordon. Yeah. That's Gordon. That's an interesting name for a child. If you had to choose between Travis and Gordon, which one would you go? I'd take Travis out yeah. of those two. Travis is I don't. Guy. I wouldn't opt for Gordon. No. Getting back to Hover, just briefly. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Hover. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Hover's great, right? It's easy to use. I'm not, I, I can't go into all the features now, but one thing that has been really coming up a lot for me this week is their renewal system. Because when you register a domain for a year or three years or whatever, you can set it to renew automatically. So when it expires, it will just renew it for you and you pay the next very fair fee for the domain name. Or you can set it to not renew and just lapse. You know, Maybe you had some brilliant idea you thought was going to be fantastic and you've decided later on that no i'm not going to need that domain name after all you can just let it lapse but it will send you some very handy reminder emails just before the end saying just so you know this is about to lapse and that's all good we're not pushing the hard sell we're just letting you know this is lapsing do you want to keep it or not i've been getting a few of those emails in the last week or two i think around this time exactly a year ago i must have gone on a bit of a frenzy of domain name registering (laughs) because i'm getting a whole bunch of reminder emails at the moment from my good friends at Hover. If you want to use Hover, go to hover.com slash unmade. Hover.com slash unmade. The slash unmade serves two very powerful purposes. One is it lets them know you came from here, which is good for us. And it gives you 10% off your first Hover purchase, which is good for you. Hover.com slash unmade. You happy with that? No, I'm very happy. Well done, man. And thank you, Hover. Yeah? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Hover. Which doesn't... It isn't the place you have to technically go to register baby names, by the way, despite that tangent Tim momentarily took us on. Well, the internet is becoming so vast. So what if you have to register your baby in the real world and then you had to register them online as well? Like as, as like, yeah, like a whole other... Yeah, your virtual s- baby. Yeah. Your eye baby. Your yeah. eye baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing next? Uh, Spoon of the week, is it? Oh, okay. All right. Well, let me uh, let me fire up the theme tune on the count of three here. One, two, three. Spoon of the week. I don't know. I don't know how I haven't gotten to this spoon beforehand. Hmm. I really love this spoon. This is a really good-looking spoon, but it's also hmm. it's deeply meshed, um, impressed, uh, present in my 
own memory because I remember when we got this spoon with oh. mum and dad. So this is from mm -hmm. my vintage. Um, the spoon is um, of the Royal Flying Doctor Service, and yep. is which is a wonderful, wonderful service in Australia. Australia, as many of you would may appreciate but not fully appreciate, is massive, really big. It's like 16 mm. Lego blocks wide. <laughs> <laughs> was it 16 or 14? I can't remember. But yeah, I don't know, but it's 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 very large. It's big. Um, it's a big country. It makes Texas look like, you know, small. And so there's lots of people who live out on outback stations, which is sort of Australian term for, you know, farms, you know, ranches, if you like, out in the middle of nowhere. And mm. so to get a doctor when an emergency happens, they can't just call a regular ambulance. So they call the flying doctor. The flying doctor flies in. Yeah. And so most of these ranches have their own airstrip and everything where people land. So it's a wonderful, wonderful service. Another thing the Royal Flying Doctor Service does, of course, is they like they go and do clinics, won't they? They'll go to some town where people congregate and just be like the GP for the day and people can just have normal checkups too. It's not like they're always going and, you know, that's emergency right. saving lives. They'll go and just do health checks as well. That's right. Take yeah, the yeah, doctor yeah. surgery out to the people. Yeah, yeah strategically move across or, or pick up someone who's having a baby. So, um, mm. and, and, you know, get them to hospital if they need to um, or, or be there mm. for the birth and all the rest of it. So log them on to hover if they need. <laughs> That's right. Help them register yeah. domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hover.com slash unmade. Um, but, so this is a spoon of the Royal Flying Doctor Service, which is, um, yep. you know, it's a, it's a very, firstly, it's a very good looking spoon. It's round. It's, it's got very some... dignified. Mm. Very dig like classy. That's right. It does feature the word royal, as many of the institutions in Australia historically do. Talk, talk us through the spoon. Well, it's got, um, it's round at the top and the enamel bit has a beautiful image on it. I actually, I actually need a bit of light here to talk. <laughs> A little bit more light, I'm seeing. It's just, the, it's just the logo of the Royal Flying Doctor Service, which is uh, just a really classy logo. Yeah, with some lovely wings. Yeah, it's got wings on it. Oh, hang on, I've got kids at the door sending stuff through the door for me. Hang on, let me pause for a minute, man. This is... All right, I've just got a little note that's coming through the door, which says, yeah. poop, hee hee. <laughs> Very good. Very mature from my wife. I tell you, I thought she was more grown yeah. up. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Mm. Hang on, there's another one. All right, I've got another note. Ah, here's this is some words. Hmm, okay. So I'll see if I can slip these right. words in at some stage during. I've had the bandsaw outside stop and now the next door neighbor's dog is howling. <laughs> Spoon. Spoon, which was, has, it look, it has beautiful silver. It's very... Very much like you imagine royal crests to look. And yeah. it comes down with a lovely, even, balanced sort of pattern down the stem. Nice stem. One of the nicer stems I've seen. I agree. And it comes down to the mm. scoopy bit, which is both a round, but it comes to mm. a point, a bit like a at the bottom of a heart. And you said you remember the genesis of this spoon. Yeah, we went on a family holiday with our caravan and car up to uh, Broken Hill and Silverton and those sorts of areas, which are, this is from Victoria, where we were living up further into sort of New South Wales. And, um, and, and we went to visit like the Royal Fying Doctor Service, sort of museum and, and centre, you know, where you see the history and get yeah. to have a look at all sorts of souvenir stuff. Yeah. And I was really impressed by it. And I was particularly excited about it because I was watching the television program, the, the Flying Doctors. Do you remember the Flying Doctors? Oh. Don't start me on how much I love the Flying Doctors. Oh. <laughs> oh. One of my, my second true love in life was Rebecca Gibney. Oh, she me too. The Flying Doctors. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Do you know who my first love was ever <laughs> because obviously this is this is dating back to a time when we're just starting to understand that you know women are attractive creatures right yeah and my first love was from a film that i re-watched two days ago because i stumbled over it on disney plus and i could talk for hours about my experience re-watching this film yes and that is the man from snowy river <gasps> Yes. Sigrid Thornton oh, playing Jessica. Jessica. Oh, and I fell in love with her all over again. 
I love the man from Snowy River as well. I love, oh, the music. I love oh. that film. I did. I forgot how much I loved it, and it was so different watching it through adult eyes. I'll talk to you about it another time, but it was so different. Things that scared you that don't scare you anymore, but you remember being scared of them. Mm. Things that you thought you understood, but you understand in a whole new light watching it as like an as an adult and stuff. Oh, I loved rewatching that film. <laughs> loved it. But the Flying Doctors also, the, the the TV show, it was kind of like a soap opera set, you know, amongst the Flying Doctors out in the country. And, you know, you had the adventures of them being doctors, but also the interpersonal romances between the... Yeah, yeah, the radio yeah. guy and then there's the nurses. Then there's the local pub uh, and all that. It's yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. Maury Fields was the publican, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he, he's forever behind the bar and... Everyone ends up there at the end of the day and has a meal. And then there's, remember, there's the the sort of the the the, the farmer who owns many properties, the really wealthy farmer who was just a little bit stiff. You know, his boots were just a little bit too shiny, and he's he was what I've heard described <laughs> as um, he was all all hat and no cattle. You know, one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> So I remember in the Flying Doctors, like it was a, it was like a classic episode that stopped the nation. Because remember, the pilot of the plane for the Flying Doctors was played by Peter O'Brien. Oh yeah, yeah, Peter O'Brien, lovely, lovely mullet, yeah, yeah, huge mullet. And he had this will they or won't they relationship with Rebecca Gibney, who was mm. a car mechanic, wasn't she, in the town? Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, Rebecca Gibney was on the plane with with him, and they had a crash. And he was in a really bad way and she had to like keep him alive through the night with a, like a handheld ventilator, keeping like squeezing the handheld ventilator to keep air going into his lungs and like, will he die without, you know, them ever getting together and stuff. That was such a dramatic episode. Oh, <laughs> I remember just being absolutely captivated by it. That's nice. But there's no there's no one in Australia that doesn't know what you mean when you say, Victor Charlie Charlie, this is Mike Sierra Fox. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't hold a walkie-talkie without doing it. That's right. Absolutely. No. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one of the actors in person a couple of years ago. So Robert Grubb, who plays one of the doctors. Yeah. And I, I saw oh, him I on the set. I was going to mention him next. Oh, it was so cool. Yeah. Um, he, he was on the set of another show being made, you know, just in around Parliament House and nearby in Adelaide. And I saw him and um, at like the lunch fair. And it was just amazing. I just... I was, I was a little bit starstruck for someone who's not a big star, but who was a big star on TV when I was a kid. And I was tempted to sort of go and say good day, but I didn't. But, <laughs> Do you know, there's a funny coincidence. A few weeks ago on an episode I talked about, I've mentioned Jack Jones from, from Southern Sons, mm -hmm. who grew up in Terrelgan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he ended up marrying Rebecca Gibney. So Did he? Yes, yes. <sighs> Living the dream. I didn't marry her, but someone from Terralgan did. And that's, I think, I, I, like I said, I partly own that. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we all... I'm just looking up to see whether Sigrid... Did Sigrid Thornton marry someone from uh, Terralgan? Ooh, that'd be a coup. I don't think they're still married, unfortunately, so... No, well, you know. <laughs> she, she, she found out he was from Terralgan. It's funny to think, it, it, with the man from Snowy River, which is a... Great Australian movie, and those who are not familiar, you can Google it and find it because it's beautiful. Like horses, it's all in the 19th century and in, in the beautiful highlands of New South Wales and stuff, based on a very famous poem, which is like a class, probably the most mm. famous Australian poem um, called The Man mm. from Snowy River by Banjo Patterson. Mm. But it also has mm. Kirk Douglas in it, and it's only later in yeah. life you realise, wow, that's a big Hollywood star to get to our little Australian film at the time. He plays two characters in it. He plays brothers, but anyway. Yeah, and the penny uh, only dropped for me from that on about the tenth time I watched it. Like, oh, that's the same yeah. actor, like the, doing <laughs> the twin. <laughs> well, something I didn't realise is that one of the characters in the film, like, because I was a kid, like when you were a kid, you didn't realise the film was based on a poem. Mm. And one of the characters in the film is Banjo Patterson. He's like this sort of. He's like the lawyer. For the he's like he's like just an observer. He's there sort of observing things. Oh hi, you know, I'm Mr. Patterson and stuff like that. And you don't realise that he's like you know, to an adult that's obvious, like it's almost gratuitous. But this was the first time I'd watched it and realised, oh Banjo Patterson's a character in the film as well. So he's seeing all this happen as inspiration for his poem he would write later. Oh. So, 
Yeah. Oh, I've never picked yeah. that up either. No. <laughs> oh yeah, there's lots of there's lots of when you watch it now, there's lots of stuff like that that you're like, ah. Oh. But it was really good after a after a bit of a cringy first five or ten minutes. Mm. It was actually quite a good film. It was like watching a um, a Jane Austen like Pride and Prejudice type thing. I like because I really like watching Pride and Prejudice, and yeah. it was a lot like that. It was like an Australian Pride and Prejudice with horses. I'm more of a more of a sense and sensibility man myself, but yes, no, I know what you mean. Nice spoon, flying doctors. Uh, and now, of course, there is another m- even more famous spoon that is available to the chosen ones, and that is our unmade podcast souvenir spoon. And each episode, we select a Patreon supporter, aka a stakeholder, who will win one of these spoons. And this week, we are sending a spoon to North Carolina to Janelle. Janelle from North Carolina, you are the lucky winner of a souvenir spoon. Congratulations. So keep an eye on your post box. Woo. Woo. I was just wooing. Woo. Woo. Oh, you I got a woo. Nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Think things that make you go woo. And um, ten more people are going to receive a smattering of Spoon of the Week collector cards, the craze that is sweeping the planet. <laughs> Uh, and th- and those those people are Ryan W from Utah, Alan G from Sweden, Richard V from Cambridgeshire in the UK, Richard D from Washington State. We've got a, a double Richard there. It's a nice move, the double Richard. Then we have Jacob M from Sweden, Arindam from London, Paul Muck from California, Yuli from Switzerland, Dan T from Queensland in Australia. And Ben W. from the USA, you all have cards coming your way. Congratulations. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash unmadefm. There's a link in the notes. And you're in the running for all sorts of other stuff and prizes and bonus material and little things we do on the side. So do consider it. Three of those uh, card winners, Tim, have won cards before. Mm. So, you know. Wow. You can always double up. They are blessed. They are blessed. Yes. They are ble- ho- I hope they don't get too many duplicates. You can end up with duplicates in this way, but that just is good for trading. They can trade them. That's right. Oh, yes. Have you done any card trades yet? No. 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 My, my, um, one of my daughters has, though. She does it all the time. Yeah. But because she bumps into Colonel Katrina and they do a bit of exchanging yeah. and stuff like that. Pretty serious stuff it is, too. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah so I've, I'm a, I have to stand back and just allow that to happen and not 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 express my opinions. But it's um it's pretty serious. Does, uh, does Colonel Katrina drive a hard bargain? She does, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think we've actually had to um, help get the stock exchange to help facilitate some of these trades. It's um <laughs> the government authorities it's gone are to arbitration. Into, yeah, a few things that have been. <laughs> Let us briefly talk about episode sponsor, Storyblocks. Ah. By the way, you're probably wondering what that music playing in the background is. That is music available from the Storyblocks library. Lovely, isn't it? Well, I, well, I can't hear it, man, because you haven't added that in yet. I'm going to insert it <laughs> later on, but you can kind of go along with it. I thought it was a band saw. So, <laughs> <laughs> hang on. Let me get let me get a loud saw from the Storybox library as well. <laughs> ah, well, there we go. There That's we more go. familiar. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> Would you like to request something? Request sort of a, a genre of music that I can play while we talk about Storybox? Genre? Uh, yes, I would like some some jazz piano, please. Jazz piano. All right. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. And, and it should be known that as I said the words jazz piano, I actually put my fingers out in front of me as if I was playing jazz piano. Like, you know, you know I think it's <laughs> impossible to say those words without sort of, and then bopping your head, you know, sort of just yeah. with your hands out in front of Are you. Are you capable yeah. of asking for the check or the bill at a restaurant without making that signature gesture with your fingers? Check, please. <laughs> That's another one. You just can't do it. <laughs> That's right. Even when you... It's not when you're signalling across the room, but you, even when you're standing there, it's like, oh, can I pay the... 
with yeah. eyebrows raised. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. So- but you never sign for things anyway. The, the signal should be pressing the buttons on the machine, but we still go with the signal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so anyway, story blocks. Let me read what was sent to me as the story blocks text, because I fumble around every week trying to explain what story blocks is. And I mean, they've written it better than I could ever say it. Storyblocks is the complete stock solution providing an unlimited library of over 1 million royalty-free, high-quality video, audio and images through cost-effective subscription plans. That's perfect. (laughs) Brilliant. It's almost like it's their company. Yeah. (laughs) It does continue. Storyblocks is perfect for when you're in need of a quick soundbite, B-roll clip, template or graphic or jazz music, anything from Storyblock's massive library of high quality footage, after effects, templates, music, illustrations and sound effects is yours to download watermark free with an unlimited all access plan. Storyblocks also urges us to mention our personal connection to Storyblocks. And that is incredibly easy for me because I use Storyblocks pretty much every day. I used it yesterday when I was editing a video for periodic videos and I needed I needed a sound that sounded like you were kind of on a spaceship, that kind of ambient noise that's in the background on a spaceship. And I went, I logged onto Storyblocks and I had it within seconds. Storyblocks is just like part of my workflow now like as much as photoshop or avid or any other tool go to storyblocks.com slash unmade if you'd like to check them out storyblocks.com slash unmade use that slash unmade because i think storyblocks like keep an eye on how people land on their site and if they see you came from here they'll think god the unmade podcast those guys are geniuses Little do they know we're just reading the text they sent us. Um, <laughs> so, thank you, Storyblocks. What's your idea for a podcast? Oh, uh, yeah, look, this is an interesting. This is a bit of a wacky idea as well. Mm. But it's it was generated through the, a conversation with another member of the family. Mm. But it's it's a bit of one of those podcast ideas that you know, we'll just I think fanatics could get seriously into. Mm. Um, this podcast is called How's My Puppy Coming Along? Right. And this is a podcast idea. Sorry, which, man, that's which... already been invented. It's called Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> I can't believe in the year that we've owned Brooklyn, hmm. how many conversations I've had with people about Brooklyn, like and how he's coming along yeah. in every detail of his life. And whenever I meet up with other people that also own a puppy... Um, yeah. Like they want updates and they want detailed updates on what's happening with Brooklyn and how's he going with this and was, what does he do under these circumstances and wh- under those. And I, I literally think I get more com- comments and questions about Brooklyn than I did with either of the babies that we <laughs> had back in the day. Yeah. Maybe because they, they progress so slowly, but Brooklyn progresses, <laughs> you know, enormously and this discipline issue is almost immediately. Don't be offended by your dad questioning the speed of your development, girls. I think you're fantastic. <laughs> That's true. I mean, in, in, in defense of your girls, Brooklyn can't speak. <laughs> That's true. He's, yeah. he's still at that sort of baby sign language stage mm. at the moment. So tell me about this podcast. It's just, well, I think I know what this podcast is. It's people just talking about their dogs. No, no, it's not just just people. <laughs> Don't poo-poo my idea before I've even started it. Man, I, I'm not poo-pooing it. Do you know anyone who talks about their dog more than me? <laughs> this is it. You and Audrey. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Please. I wondered about a podcast that walks through the life of your puppy hmm. in intricate detail. Hmm. So much so that everyone can listen and be fully up to date with almost day day by day progress on the activities of their puppy. They almost write a, an ongoing running memoir for the progress of the puppy. Like, oh, he did. Because we do this in our family all the time. Oh, did he poo outside today? No. Has he eaten? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, he hasn't eaten. And then we turn to the dog. Brooklyn, why haven't you eaten? Yes. We left this. <laughs> where did, we always ask Audrey where she went for her walk today when she went. Like out with a dog walker, like she's going to answer us. Where did you go today? What happened? How how sensitive are you about me saying things about your dog? Like, am I only allowed to say nice things about your dog? You can say whatever you like. All right, then I will. So, (laughs) 
I don't know exactly what breed Brooklyn is, but if when someone asks me what breed Brooklyn is, I answer with, yeah. you know that new fluffy crossbreed that everyone gets that's like a little bit stupid? It's one of those ones. <laughs> <laughs> those kind of dogs that have been bred not with intelligence in mind, but like just big fluffiness. <laughs> To be sort of clumsy and and playful and lovely yeah. and <laughs> I I wouldn't want Brooklyn as my partner on a quiz show. <laughs> He's a sheep a doodle. Yeah, um, basically that's what I'd say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dumb doodles are these new you know these. these <laughs> we live next door to one of these dumb doodles, and they've got like they've got the brain power of like a light bulb. <laughs> yeah. But very fluffy and lovely. I've... I always wonder, I said to one of the kids today, actually, I said, I wonder if how Brooklyn would describe our life, like our family, if he could talk. Like, what's his perspective of what's going on? Yeah. It's like they head off in the morning and then they come back and they're all excited, but then they're immediately annoyed with me. And it's like, because he's so excited to see us, he does like a little happy wee on the ground. Does he still do happy wees? He still does, a very slight one. And it's yeah. like, oh, man. <laughs> so... So whoever's not getting the massive bounding affection, because everyone comes through the door, oh, Brooklyn, it's great to see you, and there's hugs and everything. Mm. But then whoever's not getting the big cuddle is the one that says, oh, careful, he's going to wait. Look, there he is, he's weed. Yeah. All right. Do you do a happy wee every time I call you for the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> every time the podcast comes out. It's like, <laughs> happy wee. I hope all the stakeholders across the world do a happy wee when we appear in their feed. <laughs> so when they when they win an unmade spoon, oh or yeah, they get made oh a that's yeah, that's a, oh, that man. is definitely happy wee material. I would have thought Brooklyn might have grown out of happy wees by now. Oh well, you would think so, wouldn't you? But no, <laughs> I guess must be in some ways a compliment to us. Like he's so, even though he's growing up and maturing no. as a dog, he's so happy to see us. So we're obviously wonderful owners. No, it's an insult to you. Can I tell you what you have to do? Why not? Go into high pitch, super happy voice every time you walk in the house. Yes, I know. And discipline him when he jumps up on you. Yes, yes. Mm. Having daughters, it's very hard to <laughs> monitor and regulate the high pitched excitement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a very popular moment as a dad to get all discipline oriented. Like, no. <laughs> walked in the door. Oh, well, right. No, that's it. No, you can't do that. You can't be that guy. Mr. Wet Blanket. Your mm. dad could have done it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It, it would he be natural. I'm not yeah. sure why they call me Mr. when I'm their father, but anyway, <laughs> but just a wet blanket. All right. I'll keep an eye out for your dog podcast. I, I don't mind it. <laughs> it's all right. It's a, it's a bit know. like I'm having these conversations anyway. Yeah. I, I may as well be writing this down or collating it or putting it into something because it's I'm, I'm just I just I know I'm going to be talking about the dog as long as the dog is with us well recording conversations and things that happen anyway is a really nice segue to my podcast idea if I may go all right are we done with the dogs yes we're done with the dogs. We're done with this. for now <laughs> for done. now Brooklyn is a very lovely dog by the way I make disparaging comments about his intelligence which I stand by but He's a lovely dog. There is something endearing about a dog that's kind of smart. Like, like remember Snoopy? Snoopy used to wear like a leather jacket and and be no. sort of pretty cool and indifferent I, to things. Give, and... give me a dumb dog any day of the week. I love. That's one of the things yeah. I love about dogs is when they're a bit dumb, <laughs> when they can't figure things out. Like a dog that's really smart and knows where the food's hidden and all that sort of stuff and like learns how to open doors and that. Yes, I will look at that dog and admire their intelligence and think that is a truly intelligent dog. Isn't isn't it a wonderful animal? But there's something mm. really cute about a dog that just can't figure out a simple task. Because it's too simple, like it just makes you massive ears are getting in the way or something. Yeah, it just makes you feel more love for them and care and like, oh, they need care and love because they're just simple. All they want is all they want is a hug and help. You don't own a dog because you want some self sufficient animal that is completely interdependent of you. You get a dog because you just want love and like just attention and a bond. Ah, oh, give mm. me a dumb mm. dog any day. My idea for a podcast. Well, Tim, where do you stand on crosswords? I never do them. Never, ever, ever. I, do, I wouldn't imagine you do because of the sort of attention span required. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
So how can you cho- <laughs> take a, a a leisure choice of mine and t- t- turn it into? To put you just don't seem like you just don't seem like a crossword kind of guy. So anyway, and I probably haven't <laughs> traditionally. I probably haven't been either. But my wife and I probably in the last year or so have gotten into doing the crossword in the uh, in the London Times over dinner each oh, evening. Very famous one, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. We don't do the cryptic one because I, I I don't like cryptic crosswords. It's just we do one called the Times Two crossword. We do we usually do it maybe while di- while I'm cooking dinner or usually while we're having dinner. Like as we start dinner, we'll do the crossword and we'll normally finish it just after we finish dinner. And it's fun. It's I think it's probably make you know good for our brains and it's good it's a nice thing to do together as a couple you know it's always good to have something to do Uh, and it's just become a nice little ritual and we were talking the other day about whether or not it would make a podcast to listen to people doing the crossword together because when my wife does the crossword with her mum I quite like listening to them do it you know and then they'll ask me for help and I'll chime in occasionally but is there something interesting about listening to people doing a crossword? It's interesting watching people do puzzles on the train or the bus or stuff, isn't it? You look over their shoulder as they do it. What would it be like listening over the shoulder of a couple as they do the crossword each day? We wondered whether this would make a good podcast. What are your thoughts? Well, I think anything that involves quiz questions of some kind being said out loud and then enough space for you to chime in is yes. enjoyable. I really love like that yeah. idea. Um, getting frustrated when they can't get it right, but you know the answer as well is a classic. Yeah. You... Oh, you idiots. That's so simple. It's elephant. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how do you not know that? I think people like lording it over other people with their superior knowledge. Yeah, I do. I love, yeah. I mean, I love a quiz television program and getting in quick and saying the answer and then, yeah. gonna, you know, that feeling of superiority when they get it wrong. Yeah. But the, um, <laughs> this, could, this could really work if there was a couple of people with, with great personalities, which I'm not saying you guys don't have great personalities, but I'm no, saying, no, <laughs> it would really, it would, it would really work um, if your wife was to find someone else to do it with who who was really entertaining, and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, let me tell you, we did it two nights ago. We recorded ourselves doing the crossword. Really? Yes. And so, what I was thinking I will do shortly to end this podcast is play that. If I may. Well, hang on a second. This is, Mm. well, so that's interesting and I look forward to hearing it, but Mm. how self-conscious, how much did you vary your normal conversation? Here's what I think about that. My answer to that is not enough. Not (laughs) like I almost, yeah. So, so I don't think we've got it right yet, which is not not a good way to entice people to listen, but, um, (laughs) The reason I'm going to put it at the end of the podcast is that, you know, you can stop listening if you don't want to listen and not, and there will be no more of me and Tim afterwards. So this will be the end of the podcast when I play it. So, you know, you don't have to labour through it to get more of the nuggets of gold from Tim and I. <laughs> uh, you know, the, but, but, my reflect, but my reflections on it before I play it is that I think I, and we always thought this, we thought it'll probably take us, you know, three or four goes to figure out the tone and how to get it right. And bear in mind, this is just our first attempt, no planning, no playing to it. And I think we need to, I think we need to play it up a bit more. We almost did it just, we Mm -hmm. almost just did it too naturally. Like it was just us doing the crossword, how we always do it. So I think there needs, we do, we did make sure we said the clues out loud and how many letters there were more than we normally would because we were aware that yeah. that would be helpful to listeners. And I will put pictures on the screen on the video for people who want to watch the crossword being done. And it probably needed more jokes and tangents and side conversations. We didn't do that. We deliberately didn't go, you know, if the answer was elephant, we didn't talk about a funny story about an elephant or something. I think a finished yeah. version of the podcast would benefit from that. This is very much just us doing the crossword and trying to figure things out. One more thing I'd like to say from the start is, as is always the case, we make mistakes. So sometimes we put in an answer and it turns out later we figure out that the answer was incorrect and we change it and switch it up. So you, 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 we will lead you down a few blind alleys. And sometimes, you know, you'll accidentally read two down instead of two across. And so it was very much the natural experience of us getting it wrong and fixing our mistakes. And there's also, here's an Easter egg. There's one answer we get wrong that we never realize is wrong because it, it still fits. So see if you can figure out what the one we got wrong was. 
And also, a little disclaimer, the next night we didn't record. We did the crossword in record time with no mistakes before we even finished our dinner. But of course, we didn't record that one. We recorded one where we <laughs> blunder around and <laughs> muck it all up. <laughs> so uh, so what happens with the times? Do they give the answers the next day? Yeah, or? it's the next day. But what you can do is obviously Google answers, right? And there are actually websites that specialise in crossword clue answers. Mm -hmm. But also, because the times is such a popular crossword, by the time we do the crossword, so many people have Googled the answer that Google will suggest that as one of the clues. So say the clue was, Ah. uh, you know, big grey animal with a trunk, right? If you write big grey into Google... It will, it will suggest, did you mean big grey elephant with a trunk crossword clue? And you'll be able to get the answer really yes. quickly. So, um, yeah. and at the end of each crossword, as you'll hear, we give ourselves a verdict. Well, my wife gives the final verdict as to how well we did. It will be a tick of various sizes depending on how well we did. So the best we can get is a great big tick that covers the whole crossword. <laughs> that, that's if we get everything right and we didn't Google any answers and we did it really quickly and well. Medium-sized tick, small tick if maybe we Googled one or two, and then it can also move to crosses. If we have a stinker, you can get a small cross, big cross. So uh, you'll have to listen to this to find out whether we get a tick or a cross and how big the tick or the cross is. All right, so this is intriguing. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's more intriguing than doing a finder word on a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Sudoku would be quite a a mentally taxing listen as well. Three plus three is seven. We're missing a seven to the right of the eight. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Well, there's another one. It's a Mm. first attempt. It's a first attempt. I I still think this idea has potential. And this is just a first attempt without, like, Without making, without really going into full entertainer mode. Does it have a name, this podcast idea? Oh, that's a good idea. I haven't actually thought of that yet. This, just crossword is a good name, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, just crossword. Nice. The crossword podcast or something. Crossword yeah. podcast. Daily, daily crossword. I don't know. I, I haven't thought about the name yet, to be honest. If you could do this regularly enough that people would do the crossword with you, I think this could become quite popular, actually. Yeah. That... Yep. People say, do you do the crossword in the times? And they say, oh, well, actually, I like to do it with this podcast. And, you know, so mm. maybe it's later the same day it goes mm. up or the next day you're one day behind and it you're becomes right. a thing that people follow along with. The problem is, though, crosswords are normally done in a weird order because there'll be ones you don't know, so you'll jump to other areas of the crossword to try and fill that area out to, yeah. to get yourself some letters to build back up to where you were. And, and everyone does that in a different way. So if there's one you don't know but the listeners do and things like that, like you would, you would, no, you would naturally end up going through different r- routes. You would go through very different paths. and So it, yeah. that might make it hard to do along. But... I, I, I see potential in that. I, I don't know what rights issues you'd get into as well with like the times and the publishers of the crosswords, but I don't know how you'd work that out. <laughs> Which you obviously haven't done for this one. No, anyway. well, this is, this is just. I think I think we're pretty safe for just a one-off one-off suggestion idea. I think there's a. I think we're. I think we're on fair ground there. So, are you ready? Are, are, are you? Are we done for the day? Are we ready to to play this to people? As my wife and I do our evening crossword. Have you done the secret words that will pass through the door to you? I did one of them. I didn't do the other one. Well, why don't you give it to me as a crossword clue and see if I can guess the word? <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> okay, five letters yep. made of the worst tomatoes. Made of the worst tomatoes. Sauce? Yes, well done. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, that's it from Tim and I. Now it's me and my wife doing a crossword. Times to crossword number 8664. Have you looked at any of the clues in advance? Or? One. I saw one. Okay. Um, but you're not going to do what you did to me that time where you watched a, a, <laughs> a TV game show in advance and then rewound it and I thought it was live and you were getting all the answers right. I, I <laughs> it's you... because you're smug and thought and think that you know all the answers to everything, so I thought I'd catch you out. You're really proud of me and then you were getting annoyed because I knew all the answers. You haven't done it this time though. You haven't looked at like... because no, this is Now I've just seen another one because I just took my hand away. All right, let's start then before you look at too many. Okay, right. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So times two crossword number 8664. So one across is six letters, but it's four and two, so two words. 
And the clue is neglect, and in the, then in brackets, an opportunity. Neglect an, in, an opportunity. I've got it. What is that? Well, it's turned down, isn't it? I think no. it was four to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> pass up. Pass up. Yeah. Okay. Could be pass up. Yeah. If it was pass up, then two down begins with an A. And what would that be? Bow and arrow user. Archer. Yeah. No. A R C H. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it probably is pass up. As pass well. up. All right. Good start. We always like it when we get one across. Yeah. Then we know it's going to be good. Okay. Three down. Milk pudding. Eight letters. Do you know it? I know it. Starting with an S. Yeah. Starting with an S. Uh, no, if you know it. Is it semolina? Is that milk? Semolina. Is that made with milk? It's made as, yeah. Okay. Well, let's, I've put it in lightly. Okay. Penciled it in. What else comes off at that? See if we got it. Uh, well, let's do four down. Hang on. Four down. Snap. Five letters begin with P. Snap. Five letters. Um, so is it like snap as in cards or snap as in break? I'm thinking like break, like break a twig or snap. a stick. Uh, can also be like a cold snap, but I think... What day of the week is this crossword from? Saturday. So it's not going to be really hard. No. Sunday's the clever one. Yeah. I've picked the easiest one. <laughs> okay. Snap. P... No, let's not do that yet. Let's okay. try this nine across. All right. Nine across. This is the one I saw beforehand. So it's seven letters, write music. It begins with a C. Okay. It's compose. Yeah. Which makes me also think that semolina is right. Yeah. So I'm putting that in solid. All right. Sem- oh. Semolina or one semolina. M? Well, what fits? You can, it'll be whatever fits. Well, it doesn't matter if it's an O or an A because that's in the middle or something. So that um, snap is P something O. It's probably P-R-O. Do you think people listening are saying... Oh, it's stupid. It's me. Okay, let's do this one then. Prosperous. Prosperous. Where does it go? Um, it's 11 across and it's 422. 422. And so far in the first word, we've got something E, something L. Well to do. Well, that's not fair because you were thinking about it while I was explaining it. Okay, four down is snap, P, something O, something O. Now I think we've got something wrong. Mm, not necessarily. Well, it might not be pass up. Might not be, but I think it's likely to be. Audrey's very loud there. Do you think you should move her? I thought she was being all right. Do you think she's too loud? Snap. Oh, I know what it is. Photo. Yay! We didn't think that. Brady does this really annoying thing, by the way, where he says, I know what it is before he says it. Like, why can't he just say it? No, but I used to, like, then hold you in suspense. Oh, now yeah. Say it. Now I just say that it That would make on. me want to scream. But now you just say it. I know what it is. Mm-hmm. Short times, this is eight down, short time, six letters, something E, something O, something, something. Short time. Short times or time? Time. Short time. Second. We're going great guns here. Hmm? Ten across. Ten across. Stick weapon. Six letters. It begins with a C. Stick weapon. So it's not like a spear. Um... Stick weapon. Does it mean like made of wood? Yeah, I'm thinking like a spear or... Sword or... Or a lance. What are they... It's a lance they use in um, jousting, isn't it? You know what? This could be something we don't know. Let's go to five across... Aud- Audrey snoring sounds like we've got a coffee percolator on. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to think we drink lots of coffee. It's nice. She's happy. Um, let's go to five across, four letters. Um, we haven't got anything in it, um, but it'll help us with some other things. Fellow. F-E-L-L-O. Like gent, maybe? I was thinking that. Is that what it means? Fellow. It can mean that, but it can mean other things as well. You know, like a like a fellow of a society or something. Mm. But what's what's the well, things coming off? Well, it could be of? E. Then I'll put it in lightly for six down. Worker colon set of cards, four letters. So this, when it's a colon and there's two things, the answer is the answer to both of those things, yeah. isn't it? A worker and a set of cards. That's not a deck. Deck. That's not a worker, is it? Yeah, like a deck hand. Deck. Or pack. It was also a set of pack. Deck. That's work a pack. Is that a work? I think it might be deck. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure about either. We've watched too much below deck, so that's probably in my head. If it was deck, then seven down would bring in with a K. Oh, you think deck? Oh, that for that? I thought it was. Oh, hang on, I'm confused. Yeah. I've done it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Leave. So six down could be deck, but then it would have a K in that one. Hmm, what's Stick the... weapon. C something K. And pack or deck will give you a K, but I still don't know that either are right. That sounds weird. Let's try this um, seven down. Having great power. So I've got that wrong. 
There isn't a K there. Having great power, six letters. Which were you too loud? Got to go down. On the floor. On the floor. You got to go down. Having great power. Now I need more. Le- I need some more letters. I need some more letters on that first. Right. Twelve across. Fine distinction. Six letters beginning with N. Nuance. Nuance. Okay, so that um, seven down, having great power, ends with a C. Six letters, having great power. Um, it'll, it'll end with I-C, won't it? Like yeah. Like heroic or, um, you know, you'd like it. Well, maybe it's heroic. That's not really power, though, heroism, is it? No. Let's see what well, they're starting with A. Let's, let's move 13 on. 13 down, starting with A. Monarch's attendant, eight letters. Hmm. Oh, what's it called? Something e- Ari at the end. That's an equerry. That starts oh. with an E. And it could be, and it's not something to do with court, like, you know, like a courtesan or a courtier. Monarch's attendant. The queen has like ladies' maids. Like ladies in waiting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, oh, let's, let's move around and get some, let's get some words. Let's get some easies. That'll help give us more letters. Well, let's go back over here then. 15 across. <clears throat> Mistakes. Six letters. That would be errors, wouldn't it? Not necessarily. What's that? It's got an A in it as the third from last letter. Mistakes. Mistakes. It could be like errata or something like Latin, and but it could be there are other things. There are lots of words for mistakes besides errors and blunders. Okay, look, I think I've got this one. Sixteen down. Um, Mature four two. We've got nothing in it. Is that grow up? Yeah. So that means that that mistakes has got a G as the second one. What did you just say? That was errata, so it's not it's not that. Uh, mistakes, something G, something A, something something. Mistakes. Egret, egret. Egr- 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 what is it? Egret, egrets. What's that down? See if we get the last letter. Fourteen. Oh no, I've done it. <laughs> oh, you've read the wrong clue. Oh That's no. okay. Let's read the right clue. Fourteen. Four, it's fifteen across. All right. Sorry. So what's 15 across? Large lizard. Iguana. Yeah, that's better. Iguana. (laughs) All right. Mistakes is still not errors, but it is six letters. So 14 down mistakes, six letters, second letter A. Mistakes. Let's come back to that, shall we? Mm -hmm. 20 across. Very happy, comma, elated. So when it's a comma, it's like that means both things. Very happy, elated. Which one's Six that? Six letters, and we've got an O as the second one. Very happy. Joyous. Jo- joyous? Mm-hmm. I reckon it's joyous. So that would be an O. No, that would be a Y. J- no, no, no. no, no, that would be an O. So what's that? J-O-Y-O-U-S. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting it in lightly, because 21 down would start with an O. Mm. Base, colon, unit. Four letters starting with an O. On, on, oh, she wants to come up. In your bed. In your bed. In your bed. Audrey, in your bed. It's because you spoil her so much. She can't believe she's not allowed on. She's used to being on your lap for crossword time. So lift her up and see how loud she is. But she doesn't know we're recording it. It's not her no. fault. 23 aqu- across. Hang on, what's that? We should be able to get that base. You know, no, because right? I'm helping you. Okay. Golf stroke. Golf stroke. Four letters. Putt. Yep. Woohoo. So the unit... Ends with a T. So base. it's O something something T. So base could be a base as in a place where you stay. What is it? Base or what? Base colon unit. So base can also be like num- a number base. Well, that's what I was thinking. And that's why I was thinking you might get it. They're always big words. Unit. What are you thinking there? Like, is there anything that could be something that we're not thinking? I'm, I'm thinking of sing- singular, single, like, you know. But, so, oh, it could be military. Oh... Like a base in a unit. It's not necessarily joyous, is it? That's the other thing. True. Might not start with an O. Yeah. So also unit, an English term, would be like English people would call a unit like a side unit. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, like a ward. Like a... Well, let's come back to that. I one. think you're right on the, um, what's it though? Well, it's Med- um, what's it called? 14 down. What was that? That was errors, wasn't it? Mistakes. Mistakes. And it could have an... It could be, it could be something, a. something A, something S, something, something. It could also be mistakes as in, you know, he mistakes her for oh, yeah. his mother. Uh, mistakes. What's that? It'd be good to get that. Confuse. What's, that? what's that one? 18 across. Appealing to high income buyers. Eight letters. We haven't got anything in it. Appealing to high income buyers. 
Luxurious? Oh, yeah. Does that fit? Lux. Well, that would mean that 19 down would start with a... X. X. That's unlikely. What is that? Jollity. Jollity? Yeah, five letters. What words do you know that begin with an X? None, none that I associate with jollity. Does jollity mean like jolliness? Well, that's what I'd guess. I don't know then. It's not luxurious, is it? What's another word for luxurious? Like, um... Appealing to high-income buyers. Oh, what about, um, like, bespoke? Like, when it's one of a kind? Like, that kind of... Yeah, that, I don't think that would be the clue for something like that, though. What's this one? Is that... 20? 22 across. Hmm. Social insect. Seven letters. Social insect. What's the one Like that's... a bee or something. That's the one I always think of as social. What Busy else? bee. But it's one word, right? <laughs> yeah. What's an insect? That's, I mean, ants are also very social, but again, that's too many letters. Social insect. Ants and bees? What other insects are really sociable? Um, what likes to hang out together? Hmm, woodlouse? Let's look, <laughs> woodlouse? <laughs> Let's go for, what's that? <laughs> oh, woodlouse, they're, they're absolute party animals. <laughs> You always see them together. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be laughing if it turns out being a woodlouse. 19 down. Oh, is that? oh, that's Jollity. Yeah, no, across that one there. 24 across. Obstacle, difficulty. Six letters. A hurdle? Hurdle, could be. Jollity would end with an H if that was right. Oh, we get, we're getting to a Google point. Oh, we're not there yet, sure. We're getting there. Did we try 13 down? Yeah, Monarch's attendant. 17 down. Revoke in brackets a law. Oh, this one comes up all the time. Rescind. Yeah. How many letters? Six. Yeah. Where does that go? How do you spell it? R e s c i n d. No, that's seven letters. Um, Revoke a law. That's how you spell rescind, isn't it? It's not just c. No, I think it, I think you're right. Unfortunately. Revoke a law. Repeal. Repeal. Yeah. Should have done my neat writing. It's okay. 24 across obstacle difficulty. It's now got an L as a second from last letter. It's hurdle, isn't it? It's hurdle. Yeah. Hurdle. So 13 down. Now, Monarch's attendant starts with an A and ends with an R. And how many letters? Eight. Monarch's attendant. I feel like I should get this. No. I don't don't think this is my finest hour, this crossword. What's this one here? The down again. What was that again? That's jollity. Ending with an H. 18 across... Appealing to high income buyers, we've got an E in it. We really need to get this 14 down mistakes because then it'll help us out with all those other ones. Which one's that? 14 down, something A, something maybe S, something something. Mistakes. Okay, let's think about that one. Gaffes? No, because there's. What's that? Could be. G A F F E S. Yeah. Is that it? It wouldn't be joyous. That's an A, yeah. No, but what's that? Well, that might be oh, joyous, joyous, but it might not be because we've only got an O in it. So if the joyous word ends... could be joyful. Gaff still won't be right, though. Oh. What's the, what's the clue for that one that we had joyful? You're putting your finger on it and making it smudgy. Very happy, elated. Possibly ending with an F, if gaffs is right. Very happy, elated. Something O, something, 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 ending with an F. Very happy, elated. If that is gaffs, mm. what, let's look at these other two Okay, clothes. that's a good idea. So 18 across would begin with an F, yeah. which is appealing to high-income buyers. Mm. And then 22 across, social insect would start with an E, wouldn't it? And end with an E. Social insect starting with an E. Well, I can't think of any insects beginning with an E. Earworm. E- e- Ear. Earwig. Earwig. Yeah. <laughs> Ear. I don't, termites are very social. I don't. I don't. Th- I oh, think termite. It's a, I think it's a termite, and it's not gaffs. Termite. I put termite in. We're going for it. We've got to go for something, because it's, it's annoying me now. So mistakes. Something a. Something something t. Something mistakes. And it's probably going to end with s. Mistakes. So. Something a. Something maybe s. Something t. Something. Uh, can I Google what jollity means? All right. First Google. Well, I'm not Googling the answer, so this doesn't count. <laughs> no, this is, a, this is only a minor sin. <laughs> Jollity. Yeah, what we thought. Lively and cheerful activity or celebration. Mm. The quality of being cheerful. But it's not merry, because I'm pretty sure hurdle's right. That's Jollity, isn't it, that one there, the down? Yeah, something, something, R, something, H. It could end with R. It's, gonna, uh, it's not mirth, is it? Mirth? Mirth. M-I-R-T-H? What does mirth mean? Googling. 
It also doesn't count quite as Yeah, well. yeah. amusement especially expressed yeah. in laughter. All right, there we go. Yay. All right. That And that doesn't count because you got it. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at 18 across again. Appealing to high income buyers. Something, something M now, eight letters. We've got an E as the second from last one. Appealing to... Expensive, glamorous... um, Like uh, high end. Appealing to high income buyers. Expensive. You can cut out all these long pauses and just go straight to when we get it and then it will look like we're really clever. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we should be able to get this, don't you? I feel like you should. You like like buying expensive things. Mm. What? How would you describe things you like? Like what's the difference between a good handbag and a really mm, like yeah like luxury well made that's why i was going down that bespoke line like one off like so joyous could still be right couldn't it? we haven't decided about that that like, joyous is still in the game there, yeah for 14 down mistakes if we have got something a something s t something what would be the last one last letter s another s mm. but I'm going, to, I'm going to think about that mistakes one again. I don't think it is STS at the end. I just don't. Because mm-hmm. there aren't enough letters to make a word, really. What's that clue for joyous again? The across Very it. happy, elated. And we know that there's an O as the second one. Six letters. Very happy, elated. Could be joyful, couldn't it? And then that would be LT at the end. That's a different, that's a different word, though. Joyful and joyous. Like, elated, joyful is... It could be. Very happy. A later joyful. All right, let's go with... Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. And then errors is faults. Ah! Woohoo! All right, well done. Joyful. That's a game changer. So now we've got the start of this one. 21 down. Base, unit, four letters. Fort? What? Fort. I don't know that word. You know, like Fort Knox or a a fort, like for a base. Why is it a unit, though? Fort? Could be. Should we put it in? It's done. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't affect anything else, so it's in there. 18 across. Come on. Appealing to high income buyers. We've got you, something uh, M. I oh, must be able to get it now. Un. We can't get it now. We're... It must be un, mustn't it? Up market. Up market. Woohoo. Mm. Yes. Okay. 13 down. Monarch's attendant. A, something, something R, something I, something R. Eight letters, monarchs. It's going to be. It's going to end R I E R, isn't it? Like area, like a. R uh, what? R something. Do you know what? I think it is courtier, and yeah. nuance must be wrong. Yeah. All right, put courtier in. Let's figure out that nuance wrong. I reckon I've got that wrong. What's that clue? Twelve across. Fine distinction. N something C something something something. Could it be nicety? I, that's exactly what I was going to say. Nicety. Fine distinction. N I C I E T Y. I'm putting it in. That's an I there. Yeah. No, no, I think that's an I there. Nice city. How do you think? Oh, how do you think you spell nicety? Nice city. Okay. It doesn't matter now. I mean, it does matter how you spell words, but it doesn't yeah. matter for the purpose of this crossword. So. So well, this down ends yeah. with a T, but doesn't start. It with doesn't that. start with a K. I've put that in it accidentally. So, so what's that word? That Seven down mm. is having great power, and, and it's it six letters, and it ends with a T. Let's go back to five across, fellow. So it could be gent. So it could start with a T. Great power, starting with T. Uh, having great power. Yeah. Having great power. And what's this word beginning with a C? Stick weapon. Beginning with a C. Are we th- are we thinking the wrong way? And could it be like a kid's thing? Crossbow? No, too many. I mean, cannon fits, but that's not a stick weapon, is no. it? And then six down was worker set of cards, which we thought could be deck or pack. I think it is deck or pack. How is that a worker? I feel like it's, um, I feel like it could be... Is it, is it a set of cards? Set of cards. Because, because, because why wouldn't, oh, mind you, if they could, they would have said maybe deck of cards if it was pack and pack of cards if it was deck. Maybe no. that's just clever to confuse us. Set of, what other words if are that, that Look, if that is deck, then five across fellow would have D as the second one. I just don't, I think we've got to move away from deck and suit until we figure out what they mean by worker. You just said suit. Oh, yeah, because I was thinking of suit. I was, that was another the answer okay, I was thinking suit. of. Suit. And, yeah. Shall I Google what deck means? No, we're not there yet. What's another word for fellow as in, you know, my fellow, you're my fellow traveller, my co... No, I don't know. It might be time to crack out Dr. Google. 
What do you think we should Google? I'm thinking sword because I... F- stick stick weapon. Yeah, stick weapon. Because I think that... Okay, we're going to a crossword solver. I'm not sure I want you to use this one because I've had a shocker and it's going to sound like you're really clever and I'm not. I'm going to just plan. Cudgel. Oh. So it's not deck or pack because no. the cards one ends with a D. Yeah. Set of cards, worker, hand. Woo! Oh, yeah, good. Well done. Hand. All right. Right. So five across, fellow. We, we were thinking about deck hand. We, we were closer than we realised. Yeah, yeah, I know. Fellow is something H something something. Fellow. Ch- Probably starts with a T or a C. Chap? Chap. Yes. And that means, what's that one? The, the powerful one, is it? Ends mm, with, what's the clue again? It is having great power. P something something. E something T. What, what are you thinking at the end here? E something T. What could go between those two? No idea. Two T's? Could be anything. Could be could be L. L? Yeah, Elt. Oh, yeah. Having great power. Power, is it? That's right, isn't it? So it could be like, because it's either political power or it could be strength or... Having great power. I'm think yeah, I'm thinking like leader. Potent. Potent! Yay! All right, so now at the end, the Kylie does the traditional grading where she gives us a different size tick or even a cross. How have mm. we done today? I think that's got to be a tick of some size. Well, look, we Googled one. We Googled cudgel. cudgel. Yeah. We had to get the meaning of two things. Mm. Medi- I think it's a medium to small tick. I think it's a, I think it's a small tick. It, found, it felt like a bit of a... A, a difficult one that yeah like small tick uh, yeah i didn't really enjoy it yeah small, did you no it's hard, it was a hard, it was our first time with microphones too which puts a different pressure on small tick small tick we'll take that now we can watch below deck yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's our reward oh, you were good though well no, done she was you loud stories yeah <laughs>